Hello and welcome back. This is volume six of Yours Truly, Carmine from New York, Teaches Photography. Or at least I tried to. All right. Now, the last few volumes have been about uh, how to pick out a camera on eBay, what to look for. Of course, the credibility rating is number one thing to look for. Uh, now, let's go past all that. You've picked out your camera. You're happy with your decision as far as the um, as far as the seller. You're happy with the model. You've Googled the model. You've YouTube that model camera. It's something that'll fit you. Uh, it'll be uh, it'll be good uh, for what you want to do. All right. Now the big day comes. Your used camera from eBay comes in the mail. All right, here it is. This is what you ordered, for example. All right, this happens to be the Fujika, made by Fuji, Fujifilm, the ST701. Okay, this is a fully mechanical, uh, not automated at all. Um, in fact, this camera does have a spot here for a flat cell battery for the meter only. But, like I said, don't trust the meter. Even if it says it does work, don't bother putting the flat cell battery in. A lot of them anyway ask for mercury batteries, which they don't even make anymore. And the substitutes are the wrong voltage. Okay, remember you're going to use your Sekonic handheld light meter. All right. So, you get your Fujika. It came in the mail with a lens. This lens is a... Where's Carmine's flashlight? Okay, here we go. All right, came with a Fujinon. F1.8. That's a pretty fast lens. 55 millimeter Fujinon. Okay, made in Japan lens. And, like we said... Made, made in Japan body. Okay, so your camera came in the mail. The first thing you're going to do is you're going to examine it. You're going to make sure that the serial number matches the serial number in the eBay ad. Okay, and then you're going to check, look around for any obvious signs of, like we said, things that were different from the photograph in the eBay ad. Okay. So far, so good. Now, let's cock the shutter. Okay. And we're going to go through a series. When you get your camera in the mail, we're going to go through a series. The first thing is you're going to check the shutter speeds. Okay. We're going to start with B. B is good. One second. Half a second. quarter, All right, an eighth, these all sound good, as you accumulate cameras, whether by collection or just by using them, you'll know by sound if the shutter speed's accurate, fifteenth, alright, thirtieth, sixtieth, and if you notice these numbers, these shutter speed numbers, that they are twice as fast as the one before or half as fast as the one before, whether you're going up or down on the shutter speed dial. One, one twenty-fifth of a second. So far, these sound very good. That was 250. 500. And 1,000. Okay, so far... This camera that you just got in the mail from eBay, shutter speed sounds, check out. Now, the next thing you're going to do, let's take off the lens. This lens is a, what they call, an M42 mount. Okay, M42, if you look here and on here, it's just a screw in like you were screwing a nut on a bolt okay now we're going to open the back of the camera 
Okay, you're going to examine it. Okay, you're going to make sure that the shutter curtain, that's what opens and closes, right, right here. This one is cloth, which is common, no problem there. You're going to make sure that it's in good shape. All right, you're going to make sure that everything that the eBay seller said as far as the condition, right? Pressure plate looks good. Uh, a good sign is that there's no broken pieces of uh, film in here from the sprockets being uh, broken by the gears, okay? Now, you're going to check the shutter speeds again, but this time by holding it up to a light. Let's see if we can recreate something here so that you guys can see okay let's see all right we're gonna hold this open i'll put the flashlight into the front of the camera where the lens would go all right and here we go you saw that that was a thousandth of a second sorry that was 500th and you will skip a few shutter speeds okay ah, i forgot to show you with the flashlight okay if you notice the light is hitting the mirror going up to the prism and it's coming out the viewfinder here you can see that <laughs> pretty cool all right let's see if the shutter curtain opens uh, to the correct speed and we're on 60th of a second yep let's keep going and we'll just go to one quarter of a second one fourth of a second okay here we go perfect okay so that's the most important part of checking uh once you receive your camera from a seller on ebay all right now we're going to look and make sure that this that the take up spool and this is the, where the gears, where the, the, the gears go into the sprockets and move the film. Okay, let's make sure that they're moving. Let's see. Yeah, they're moving nicely. Okay, no problems there. The take up, the rewind nice and smooth okay nice close as well uh let's look at something we really didn't discuss yet the light seals okay what are the light seals the light seals 35 millimeter or 120 any any kind of film camera okay run here anywhere where the cover closes okay they run this way, around, down on the cover, here, okay, at the hinge, okay. Now, the seller on this camera said, they're fine, okay. Now, let's say you had this camera, you took pictures, they came back, and they're obvious light leaks, right, bright sunny day light was getting in through the top through the side through the hinge okay let's say that happened you can repair light leaks yourself it's not a big job at all you don't have to send it out you don't have to return the camera if you got a good deal on it you can fix it yourself with some very 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 simple tools and one surprising item from a knitting basket. Okay, so in the in this channel, okay, here, okay, it's a little groove, which is for the metal of the door to fit into. Okay, inside this groove. From the factory in Japan 40 years ago they put a piece of felt not that much wider than a piece of human hair in here just glued in here and across the hinge 
okay what happens over time is that the constant pushing it down squeezing it squeezing it right people store their camera with it closed obviously that felt gets compressed and instead of springing back and filling the channel back up to prevent light from going in it stays flat and doesn't do its job anymore very very simple first thing you could do is you can go online you can go on eBay there's a at least two companies that sell pre-made pre-cut light seals okay these are pieces of felt with self-adhesive glue on them you just peel off the paper and you would stick it in all right you get a piece for you get a pre-cut pre-measured piece for this channel one this channel that's two the hinge that's three and you usually get a replacement for the in here when the mirror slaps up to get out of the way so the light can go through and expose the film there's a piece of felt there to soften the blow okay it cuts down on two things uh, vibration when it hits smacks into the top of the camera it cuts on that and it also reduces the chance of the mirror cracking that's extremely rare okay so in this case right you can buy these on eBay right you would just put in light seal kit and the make and model of your camera in this case the Fujika ST701 and you'll get in the mail after they pre-cut it right you'll get this little envelope in the mail and you get all the pieces you need now you can't just put them in you've got to get the old stuff out okay extremely simple you could get a toothpick and you put a toothpick in here and you get it started and once you get it started you can peel out the old one it's pretty tough stuff it, it, it usually doesn't break you go here with a toothpick you get it started you peel it out you go over here with your finger or with a toothpick you peel out the old one same thing with the felt bumper for the mirror all right then you would take your new pre-cut pre-adhesive light seal kit and carefully you start over here and you push it in after you remove the paper exposing the glue and then with the toothpick you just push it in nice all the way here two three four all right then you close it all right give it a nice squeeze and now your camera has brand new light seals I would say 99.9% .9 of the time that fixes it now what did I say about getting something from the sewing kit I purchased a camera years ago from a gentleman who knew and was honest and said light seals are bad in the camera box that came he sent me this he sent me black cotton yarn from his wife's knitting basket and he explained to me how to do it he only sent me like a foot or so I this is from home all right and it was amazing it worked perfectly I've done it now on five other cameras in the kit that you buy on eBay which is pretty expensive but if you're only gonna do one so what comes this gigantic toothpick it's like, it's like a, a skewer you would use you know for a barbecue I don't know and this helps you pick out the old light seal and push in the new light seal All right these are pretty handy but I found that toothpicks work just as well or you know what a pair of tweezers right a pair of pointy tweezers they work just as good okay so 
with the yarn, right? With the yarn, right? This is, where am I? This is probably too thick, right? But you can unwind it and make it half the width. You know, you just pull it apart because it's two strands together. Now, what kind of glue can you use? It's very important. Do not use crazy glue. Do not use crazy glue. Why? When crazy glue dries, it gets hard as a rock. And you don't want that. You need pliability inside the channel for your uh, new light seal material. So you get silicone. Clear or black. That's a little harder to find. Silicone. 100% silicone comes in a tube you put a little bit on a napkin or something and with the toothpick after you've cleaned out the, removed all the old light seal okay and you get all the dust out all the little particles from the light seal because it's old it's dried out right you want to take your blower right you want to take your blower and blow out all the dust put in the silicone with the toothpick that takes time you put it in you get another tissue you wipe the area you wipe it so it's only in that groove then you take your single strand of black yarn and you put it in pushing it in with a toothpick or a wooden skewer like this right push it in push it in do the same for your hinge area right this is a light seal right here and you do the same for your mirror box light box up here right there okay you let that dry overnight everything is overnight when it comes to working on cameras and glue don't be in a rush then, after you've put in the silicone, and after you've put in your light seal, the yarn, right? Don't close it for, for the overnight drying. Leave it open, all right? If you close it, this is going to get all full of silicone. You're going to pull out the yarn. Just let it dry. This area here, this is the, the metal that goes into that groove. You just want to make sure that that's nice and clean. Get it with your with your blower, okay. Um, remember the first roll of film that you use with a new camera. Consider it a test roll. Put it in, go outside, bright light. All right, um, you'll be able to determine if the shutter speeds are accurate, right? When could you going to use accurate uh, exposure with your Sekonic handheld light meter? right you'll be able to tell if there's any uh, light leaks okay your first roll is your test roll all right now you've gotten your camera okay uh, you've determined that the shutter speeds are good now you got to clean it even if it looks clean you got to clean it now I'm going to tell you how to do it first thing you're going to do is you're going to get some carbon fiber the carbon fiber some microfiber cloth now what i do not in this case this happens to be a zeiss one you could buy this you could buy microfiber cloth on a big roll and just cut little pieces six by six inches on your own they save you a lot of money you take this this is 99 percent isopropyl alcohol okay i do this for every single used camera you get on eBay or anywhere okay you wet it make sure you close it because this stuff will evaporate right before your eyes okay and you just clean the whole camera okay start at the top and work down just like you would wash a car you start at the top and you work yourself down okay hit every place except the glass you don't want to clean the glass now I don't know if you guys have ever noticed when you buy a used camera all right a lot of people smoke when you put this up to your face you're breathing in right you're breathing in, your nose is somewhere around here you're breathing sometimes smoke 
I said, that's disgusting. Alcohol on a cloth will clean that stank off the camera. And you might have to do it a few times. Okay? You do everywhere. Everywhere. Top, sides, around. Nothing. You don't do the glass. You don't do the mirror. You don't do the rear view. Find the glass with alcohol. No. Why? Because there's coatings on it and alcohol will remove the coatings. All right. You got that all clean. You got your blower. Okay, you're going to blow that off. This also helps dry the alcohol. All right, the inside, the light box, point the camera down. All right, don't go past. Don't go past the opening. All right, you don't want to jam it in. Go up towards the focusing screen. Okay, now let's talk about blowers and air. Canned air. I used to buy canned air, you know, aerosol cans of air dust off I used to buy them by the case for cleaning cameras and lenses and your keyboard and all your electronics and I said oh my god there's got to be a better way so I looked into refill the refillable cans like, uh, or the ones that you you pump up yourself but they're too big then I found on Amazon the O Polar this is the O Polar rechargeable dust blower okay listen to this this is so powerful you have no idea doesn't take batteries because it's rechargeable the recharging port is right here and you plug it in the other end into any USB phone charger or whatever all right it comes with two two of these nozzles this is the straight one comes with another one but at the end there's a brush all right I said ah, I don't trust these things but this is extremely powerful you buy it once this has already replaced I don't know a couple of cases of dust off already and it goes and it goes and it goes the recharge one recharge lasts me months all right so here we go all right you do that to the whole camera next thing I do okay is you take q-tips all right regular cotton swabs all right regular cotton swabs and you use a good lens cleaner all right this this happens to be Zeiss brand lens cleaner I've tried them all and what I you're always looking for is something that doesn't leave streaks all right something that once you're done you don't have to clean it again because this dried and left streaks okay um, there's nothing perfect out there but this one is as good as you can for a decent price but digital sensor cleaner called Eclipse all right this absolutely doesn't leave any residue all right but it's pretty expensive it's probably just alcohol I don't know what I don't know what this is all right Eclipse all right you clean sensors with it digital camera sensors so I keep a bottle of this around in case I have something with a lens a mirror you know an, an eyepiece that I'm cleaning and I just can't get it right I'll go to this in a pinch now you'll see this you'll see me hold this up it says Kodak lens cleaner this is just the bottle there hasn't been Kodak brand lens cleaner in here in 15 years but it's pretty cool you know it's got the coat it's in Kodak yellow and uh, what I do is when this gets empty I just open it and refill it with the Zeiss lens cleaner. Right, this this tip pops off. Right, you take your Zeiss cleaner, you fill this up, and you're good to go. Why don't I just use this this spray applicator on the Zeiss? Because it sprays like Windex. It just goes everywhere. No, because you'll notice 
you need to control and you take your brand new q-tip right you put one drop of the Zeiss lens cleaner or any or any lens cleaner you like not Windex okay close it always close your stuff because you're gonna tip it over it's gonna spill out you'd be a little annoyed all right now the first thing I start with is the mirror right in the light box clean the mirror go back and forth cleaning the mirror okay before it dries flip it over right dry it go in circular motion right go in back and forth motion you want to get the whole thing then that's done once you use both sides don't reuse it right then get another q-tip and we're going to clean the focusing screen i don't know why this snaps shut all right focusing screen another brand new q-tip one drop and okay turn the camera upside down all right and in here oops in there is the focusing screen go back and forth up and down circular flip it over now you'd be surprised on how much dirt and grime you get out of this because most photographers don't clean this area okay blower or now with a digital camera you never use something powerful air wise in the light box because you will push the dirt onto the sensor okay don't do it especially in a mirrorless camera okay don't use anything powerful on a digital camera you just want to hold it upside down and use a blower all right okay now we've cleaned the outside of the camera with alcohol we've cleaned the mirror and one side of the focusing screen with lens cleaner and q-tips and a blower okay unfortunately this prism doesn't come off without this assembling the camera so you can't clean the top side of this of the focusing screen it's okay this one happens to be pretty clean all right now we're still not done with the light box okay the light box has usually let's see in this case yeah in this case the sides of the light box see right there the sides that's felt right and on the other side that's felt if you always had the lens on the previous owner right dust really won't accumulate in there but that felt obviously you can't clean it with a q-tip so what you do is you get a stick right in this case it's a tooth it's a toothbrush it's a paintbrush and on it and on it you just take a piece of scotch tape and you put it on you know backwards with the sticky side with the sticky side out and all you're going to do is you're going to take that tape on a stick and you're going to go into the light box and just touch the wall just touch the wall touch the felt right you're going to go on one side other side bottom anywhere you see a little bit of lint okay and it sticks to the tape check it again with your flashlight all right, there's a little bit more on the bottom. All right, a little blower. Now, here's another tool, inexpensive. If you guys ever heard of Harbor Freight, the Harbor Freight sells these loops. This one's a 3X, three times loop. Uh, you get a set of uh, five different magnifications. For a few dollars. They're plastic. Harbor Freight. All right. If you don't have a store near you, I know. I think they have an online store. And you just check inside. Okay. For any lint, dirt, 
hairs like that. All right, now, we're still not done with the front of the camera. An area that's never ever cleaned by people that own cameras is the threads on the lens mount. Okay, just get your clean Q-tip with one drop of lens cleaner and just go around the area of the lens mount. Okay, it's filthy. All right. You don't know where your camera's been, what it's been up to. Okay, it's filthy. Then dry it. Okay. A little air again. Now, the reason you do air every time you finish with a Q-tip is the Q-tip's cotton fibers. And some could come off. All right. So, we have cleaned the exterior with alcohol, including the... Uh, covering whether this is vinyl or leather, right? We clean it with alcohol, get the stank out. Okay. Another Q tip. Now we're going to clean the uh, rear, the viewfinder. Okay. That's glass. Lens cleaner on a new Q tip. Just go around and around and around. Now somebody's eye has been on it. You don't know if they had pink eye. You, you don't know. You don't know the history. Of this camera. You might be the fifth owner. You might be the tenth owner. You might be only the second owner. You don't know. Okay. Done. Now. I don't know if you've been picking up on this. But a lot of these older cameras. Right. This is the cold shoe for the flash. It's an accessory. Alright. This you have to get extra. To happen to come with this camera. But you would unscrew. This eyepiece ring. Slide on. This flash. Holder. It's a cold shoe, and then put it back on. It wasn't part of the build on like they are now on top of the prism. All right, some people take them off. Why have they don't want the extra weight? They don't like the way it looks. All right, me, I'm like, leave it alone, leave, leave it, it's fine. All right, so now this is the uh, covering for that flat battery. I never use the light meter in these old cameras because they're not accurate anymore. All right. Even when they say in the eBay listing, camera works perfectly except for the light meter. Light meter not working. Light meter not tested because they can't get the battery. All right. These are all good for you. It's going to lower the price. But I do open this up anyway with a dime. Right. I clean it out. And I put it back together just because I don't want to have a camera that's got that green battery leakage in there. Or it might be clean. This one happened to be clean. I cleaned it already. Okay. Now let's see. That's, uh, don't forget now, we've changed all our light seals. Okay. Looks good. We dusted this off already. Looks good. Okay. Now we still have the lens to do. The lens that came with the camera. Okay. Okay, this is the lens that came with the camera. All right, let's remove the rubber uh, lens hood. Okay, let's remove... I've had this camera, so this is the Hoya. This is the Hoya filter. Okay, the UV filter. All right. First thing, before you clean glass, before you clean your lenses, which is called glass, right? You should blow it. Because there might be a particle in there, like a sand particle, that instead of just hitting it directly with the Q-tip, which might do some damage, right? You blow everything off. New Q-tip. One drop of lens cleaner. Right? In this case, it's the Zeiss lens cleaner. All right? Start with the front element. Okay? And just go around the edge. And then go circular pattern around the hole glass okay around the whole glass okay then flip it over the q-tip and dry it okay now this is where you really want to make sure that 
it dried good that there's no residual dried lens cleaner all right this is fine all right then what I do is I take another q-tip another drop of lens cleaner all right and I clean the filter threads nobody cleans the filter threads all right but what a perfect place to accumulate dirt because they're little metal threads okay clean that okay done blow it okay examine it looks fine okay now since this is a brand new Hoya lens filter right right there that doesn't it didn't come with the camera obviously right I know it's clean Starting them can be a pain in the neck sometimes. All right. Not really on that tight. All right. This is this is a good time though to tell you you might buy a lens and it says on it it's at a good price, right? It says filtering dented. You can't put filters on it anymore and you can't put a lens hood on it anymore. You're going to get a good price on that lens because of the dented filtering. All right. Do I buy them? Yeah, once in a while. I mean, don't be afraid that, oh, it's all out of whack. It might not focus right. Okay. Because you're going to get it. You're going to examine it. You're going to, you're going to check the focus, right? You're going to check that it focuses well, blah, blah, blah. You're going to take pictures with it. And then... If your pictures are all screwed up, you're going to return it. But there is a tool to fix dented filter rings on lenses. If I can get it out. Come on, little fella. Hold on. It's coming. This is the tool, okay, for fixing dented filter rings on cameras. Now, you get this at jewelry repair stores online. What this is made for is to fix rings, rings that people wear on their fingers, right? Sometimes they dent. Right, because gold is soft. You would put the ring in here and you squeeze it. Okay? Takes the dent out of the ring. But photographers have learned that if there's a dented filter ring, you can do the same thing. You put this right on the dent and you can slowly, slowly, you squeeze out the dent. This piece here, the white piece, that's made out of nylon. Right? It's not steel, right? Meaning it's not going to destroy the th the threads, the tread, whatever it is, you know, the, the screw on the filter. So you can still screw it in and you squeeze it, you squeeze it, and it will straighten out the dent on that lens. Okay? So... You've put, you've put, you've cleaned the lens, you put your filter back on. Now, this is the most important part of the whole cleaning process is the rear element. Okay? Why? Because we've mentioned before in other volumes, this is the closest element to the film. Okay? Or in digital cameras, it's the closest to um, your, your, Yeah, closest uh, to the sensor. All right. So, same thing. One drop lens cleaning fluid. Never, never put the lens cleaning fluid onto your lens and then rub it around. Why? Because that liquid will go immediately to the sides. These lenses are cemented in. Okay? It's very easy 
for the liquid to go past the glue and now you've got liquid inside the lens don't do it put a drop on the cotton q-tip okay now this you really got to pay attention to this has to be immaculate this can't have any residue it can't have anything okay looks good now you want to look through it right he said the seller said that the lens had no fungus there's no fungus no haze no haze no scratches dust you're gonna see it'll say some dust don't worry about dust dust is nothing it won't show up all right you don't want to scratch on the rear element you don't want fungus on the rear element you don't want haze anywhere okay so let's see did we go through everything okay ah very important point I'm glad I have my cue cards now sometimes you're gonna get a camera and if you, the seller is honest he'll say black covering vinyl leather covering peeling it's intact it's there but it's peeling and it's very common because one of two things all right the one of the owners before you right peeled this off to get to the screws that are underneath it to take the camera apart or a repair shop right you have to take this off sometimes to get to screws right and when they put it back on the glue was dry and it didn't stick too well this is an easy fix i fixed many cameras with the peeling um finish on it all right especially nikon they have uh, a lot of rubber areas on the dslrs that over time it glues the glue dries and it peels up you get a good price the thing is you gotta know how to fix it so this is what you do say this is peeling off okay you get crazy glue okay you get crazy glue what kind gel not the super liquidy one this is gorilla super glue gel I buy this they don't send me a thing all right now the reason you get the gel is because it stays where you put it so simply you would peel it back a little bit make sure there's no dirt and dust right you take one drop of your gorilla glue make sure you get it on the seams you spread it with not with your finger don't be an idiot spread it with a toothpick right immediately fold the covering back rub it rub it rub it rub it and then you get a photographer's little helper this right this is gaffer tape from gaffer power okay here's the beauty part about gaffer tape it sticks well it's strong but when you remove it it doesn't leave any residue like a duct tape you do not want to use duct tape you want to use gaffer's tape okay so after you have glued you put the glue you put the vinyl or the leather back on nice and tight you fit it nice gaff is tape rub it rub it rub it rub it and you're done for overnight the next morning peel it in the direction that the leather or vinyl is going right the seam is here right so you want to let the tape roll over the seam not this way grabbing that leather covering and pulling it off again you want to go from behind the repair right and you peel it off and it's done and that is how you repair peeling leather rubber leatherette vinyl from your camera okay um and 
I think I covered everything. Okay. Oh, to check the lens. All right. You want to make sure, or believe me, your test, your first test roll, right, will determine more than I'm even mentioning here. You want to make sure that the lens, right, that the aperture, right, you want to make sure that the aperture closes. I'm pulling, I'm pushing the pin in the back. Right, I'm pushing the pin in of the lens. You want to make sure that that's nice and smooth. It's not sticky. Okay. You want to make sure that when you close the lens down, right, there's no oil on the blades. All right. Oil on the blades is the grease that lubricates everything has migrated onto the little thin, ultra paper thin pieces of metal that make up the aperture that open and close. And what will happen is if there's lubricant showing on the blades, it'll stick. It'll do the opposite. It won't lubricate. It'll make them stick together. You don't want that. Okay. Everything looks fine. Okay. Uh, how do you put the right way to put a lens on a camera? Any camera, digital, film, is you point the camera opening to the sky. You take your lens and you put it on this way. Okay? This is the only correct way to put a lens on a camera. Okay. And there you have it. This is the Fujika ST701 that we used as a demonstration that you got your first, well, you got a used camera in the mail on eBay. We cleaned it, light seals, repaired the skin, cleaned the lens, cleaned it all up. Looks great. Looks like, like I always say, looks like a piece of jewelry. Okay, that's enough for today. Very busy. 47 minutes went by so fast. All right, guys. Once again, I just want to say thank you for watching. Number one, um, if you want to contact me, it's it hasn't changed black and white photo at aol.com it's my email contact me directly if you want to see my photographs www.carmintaverna.com is my website thousands of pictures on there i don't sell anything on there there's no ads it's just an enjoyable website to see photographs and what gear was used okay have a great day. Have a great night. Have a great morning. And if you can't sleep, put this video on. Maybe I'll put you to sleep. Take it easy.